So welcome everybody. I'm Thorsten Lebhus. I'm uh, talking, uh, you, uh, telling you about how to make Linux kernel developers fix your uh, your Linux kernel bug. And I need to increase the haste of my help, uh, the lightning of my laptop. Let me start by being fully honest here. Um, the title promises a little more than reality can can fulfill. There's a simple reason for that. Uh, sometimes uh, reports on kernel bugs simply fizzle out, and they are not uh, uh, that the problem isn't solved. That will always happen. I will get back to that later. Why it's like that? Because that's not even the worst news yet. Uh, in rare cases, developers uh, will be unable to fix an fix an issue. And um, there's one more bad thing: the kernel actually contains code nobody nobody will uh, uh, is really responsible for. And uh, yeah, then uh, your bug report will will, will last uh, will lead to nothing. There's a simple reason for, for these three aspects. Um, the Linux kernel is made by volunteers. Note that volunteers doesn't mean hobbyists here. Yes, sure, some of them are hobbyists, um, but most of them are employees. But it's, um, those are employees from companies contributing voluntarily. And the thing is, um, the thing with those companies is, um, they, uh, uh, with those volunteers is, um, um, you can only motivate. Um, you can't really force them to do any any work they can't do or don't want to do. And you can um, only motivate them, which Linux Linux Torvalds actually does. Uh, but that only works up to a point, um, um, because at some point you risk alienating them, and um, they, um, people might stop contributing, or companies might even come to the idea, hey. Um, Let's try to team up and get this Linus out of out of out of the way and and fork Linux. Uh, and an analogy helps um, understanding this situation. Linux is a little bit like a like a playground that it's uh, built and maintained completely by volunteers. Um, some of those uh, volunteers are hobbyists that wanted to build something for their kids or uh, to learn new stuff or uh, simply enjoyed helping building this this playground. Uh, and some of those volunteers are actually, or in the Linux case, are uh, many uh, actually employees from local or international companies uh, that saw some benefit in, help, uh, for, in helping building this playground. For example, because um, they have a coffee shop or gift shop nearby, and uh, that way can 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 uh, um, can sell new uh, more stuff. But the thing with all those volunteers is. Uh, sooner or later, all those um, hobbyists and company, companies uh, move on to something new, to new, new products or, 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 or you know, their interests change. Um, as, uh, yeah, as they change all over time, that's pretty normal. Yeah, and um, for example, the, the kids became uh, adults, or companies closed, or uh, something else, um, and then those volunteers vanish. And yeah. Um, some of them, uh, nevertheless, um, stay around and and uh, help when kindly ask. Um, um, and sometimes other volunteers that are new will step in and take care of things. Uh, yeah, but you can't force those other, uh, other volunteers to to take care of something somebody else built, um, because they might have no interest in doing that. Um, uh, thing is, luckily, there's often no need to force anyone to do anything because. Um, most uh, um, uh, um, uh, unless some play structure breaks or is found to be dangerous, well, it can continue like that and standing there and be and, and be enjoyed by the by, by the kernel, yeah. And that's actually the same with Linux, and um, this is the reason uh, why the Linux kernel developers are obliged to fix some issues, um, yeah, if they become um, dangerous or, uh, or something breaks. Um, yeah, and if they actually don't do that, they will be looked at by this man. I guess all of you know them. I uh, don't need to, uh, uh, to introduce him. And do you want to be looked at it uh, at you like this? Yeah, I guess most of you don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah, luckily um, 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 most of it, uh, it doesn't happen that often that that things break or become dangerous because software doesn't decay like a play structure on 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 a playground normally. Yeah. Uh, that's the one good news here, and the other good news is uh, most of the time developers will gladly address uh, most issues in their code because they feel proud of it and uh, want to make sure that, uh, what they build uh, continues to work well and is enjoyed by, by people. But the thing is, we all have to, to deal with this thing called life. It might, might get into the way. Uh, the particular developer, for example, uh, that owns or takes care of some code, uh, might be short on, on time because he's stressed or sick or overwhelmed with other reports um, or his boss forces him to, to work on, on other things. And the thing is, 
that is something that happens frequently. Um, I guess many of you will know that from your own life that uh, sometimes you want to w work on something and think, want to help somebody, but uh, um, you can't because uh, other things are more important. Yeah, and then then bad bug reports are the first uh, developers will will ignore or that fall through the cracks in the ends, which actually happens quite often because um, yeah. Um, there are many bug reports when it comes to the kernel, and the kernel developers have a, have a lot on their plate already and not that much time. Yeah, and it's in your hand to actually prevent this fate. Um, uh, so let's reframe the slide we, we I, I showed earlier. So it's more like um, most developers will gladly address your, um, issues if you write a decent report. And the thing is the 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 um, the emphasis here really lies on the decent. And that's actually why I tell you how to write a decent report. Um, as that's how you make the Linux kernel developers fix your bug if they are able to. In addition, you will also learn when you can insist on a fix in case a, um, such a report isn't acted up on properly and how to spot issues that are unlikely to be fixed uh, for the one reason or another, uh, another to save yourself from trouble there. That actually concludes uh, the introduction and brings us to the uh, the first act of this talk, which is actually how to create a decent report. So let me stretch the playground analogy here a little bit further for two reasons. The first reason is simply the example is too small. When it comes to Linux, you need to think of something bigger, like a big amusement park that's uh, even bigger than this one I show here. Let's call it Linux land for this talk. Uh, but but an amusement park that doesn't need any any um, and uh, doesn't need any stuff and obviously has no entry fee that is built and maintained and uh, constantly improved by volunteers. So that's more accurate to the situation. The second thing um, why I need to stretch this analogy is um, the kind of immaterial. So it's not really an amusement park. It's more like a book to build your own amusement park, like an ebook with instructions to do that. That is maintained by volunteers, freely available, and everybody. Any, anywhere I can, can put it into a gigantic 3D printer and build your own Linux, Linux land within a few minutes. Uh, or update, update yours in case you have one. Sorry, yes, it's a little bit far-fetched. Um, but the thing is that the good, good real-life analogies for software are hard to come by. So, got that? Now, now, it's, now let's say you visit some park that was built from the, bar, from the book. And uh, you do that with, with your kid, and it's actually, uh, the kid is actually injured in a water coaster. Um, a really good friend of you that helped with this book uh, designed, uh, uh, a good friend from school days. Uh, and obviously you tell your friend, who's uh, uh, pretty devastated and uh, um, actually looks into the, this, uh, the, the issue and for, for hours and really can't find the reason why the, why the accident happens. And um, yeah... After a while, he, um, he's, he says, hey, I'm flying over to look into this. I, I, I mean, I don't have much time. I recently got a kid on my own, and I'm living 2,000 kilometers away, but, but this bothers me. And yeah, the friend, uh, the friend is flying over, and immediately when he got, goes into the park where the, the accident happens, notice, notice that the park looks a bit different um, than, than regularly because, yeah, as it turns out, uh, the one that built the park actually modified the book before building the park, um, and, for, and when 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 he modified the book, he actually made a, uh, uh, install a bit, uh, bigger water pipes uh, with a higher water pressure to improve the performance of the water coaster. Yeah, and your friend then will will travel home really annoyed. My, I mean, he wasted money and wasted many hours, was um, away from home and his kids. And was blamed um, from from an accident that somebody else falls that uh, where he can't can't do anything about. Yeah, and you don't want to do that to a friend. Yeah, yeah. Nobody of us uh, wants to do that. Yeah, and that's why you shouldn't do that to the volunteers that make Linux easier. And that's why you want to make sure you um, the kernel you're testing with and reporting with is actually an um, un unmodified kernel. Uh, so built directly from sources as distributed by kernel.org. And the thing is, most of the kernels used in the wild are not vanilla, so uh, they are often heavily modified and enhanced, especially those from Red Hat or SUSE Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu. Um, there are very, uh, really a lot of modifications in there, and the thing is, that makes most of these kernels uh, unsuitable for reporting issues to the Linux kernel developers, um, because all these small and big uh, modifications um, 
can can lead to all sorts of issues and um, then kernel developers um, yeah uh, they might might debug some some bug for hours that in, in fact doesn't happen with the upstream kernel that's just wasting their time um, that's actually why why some kernel developers also reject um, kernels from 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 distros that only lightly patch their kernel Fedora is one of them um, some some actually take those those bugs but in the end it's always risky to to submit an an, an, an kernel report a bug report um, where you test it only with a distribution kernel because it might be, might be simply ignored by the developer. So um, that's why, <coughs> in that case, that's why you want to um, report such problem to your Linux distributor. And but the thing is, um, that's often a dead end because. Um, Linux distributors don't, uh, don't have the resources to deal with all the reports they got. There are simply too many of them and they don't, don't, can't test anything. Yeah, and that's why in the end, especially if you have a uh, quite special bug, uh, yeah, that's why you better might want to consider installing a vanilla kernel yourself on your Linux distribution. Um, that's often pretty easy um, because for the big Linux distributions, there's um, a pre-built. Uh, there are pre-built kernels uh, available. I, for example, ma maintain a repository for Fedora myself, where you can install RPMs with the with a uh, vanilla kernel to test, test exactly uh, uh, if a uh, problem happens with the up upstream kernel. And installing those are pretty easy. And um, um, but as I said, for all the other distributors, uh, there are also such repositories. Um, there's another option, actually. You could simply compile a kernel yourself. That's actually not that hard. There are many how-tos on the net, but don't look too much into uh, uh, Better pick those that use commands like those I, I mentioned here, because that make compiling and configuration pretty fast. For, for testing stuff with an upstream kernel, that's pretty easy and uh, um, pretty easy to build and doesn't take that long. Yeah, and after you installed your vanilla kernel, check if the issue happens with the, with, with the kernel again because it might, might have vanished again. Yeah, and reminder for later, when you later write your report, focus your, your um, report on just this kernel and forget about the distros because if you're reporting the upstream con uh, um, um, the problem to the upstream developers, they don't ca care much about about the Linux uh, distributors kernel. They don't mainly care about um, um, the upstream kernel. And mentioning other kernels or the distributor kernel just confuses things and makes the report harder to pass. So this this already concludes this point. Gets uh, gets get, and brings us to the next one, which is pretty related. Um, say again, uh, think again of this park, and, and this time you build your one yourself, and um, you complain to your friend this time because um, an uh, attraction he designed um, fa fails in, in, in your park, and he checks un unsuccessfully again and, and flies over. Turns out you used a book from two years ago um, to build your park that had a bug that was eliminated like 18 months ago. A uh, friend was simply not aware of that bug. Um, because it was uh, caused by an infrastructure, a friend, for, uh, or another friend of uh, the, that friend um, designed or actually uh, was actually fixed during a big redesign or some improvement, or or maybe your friend actually fixed it 18 months ago and simply forgot about it. Because if you're doing lots of changes all the time, you don't remember what you did 18 months ago. Yeah, and yet again, you don't want to annoy a friend like that by building something that's clearly or using something that's clearly out of date and that's the same for the Linux kernel as well. That's why you should ensure your kernel is really fresh when you're testing uh, for, uh, or before reporting a bug because the kernel changes changes quite a lot all the time and, and the bug might actually be fixed. Uh, yeah. So what actually qualifies as fresh? Um, there, um, um, what you should do, really should do there, is test the latest mainline kernel. Uh, that's often an RC kernel. You see, um, um, uh, that's actually not dangerous, um, but uh, um, because they're pretty stable. But the thing is, you want to test them because every bug fix lands there first. Yeah, and as I said, it's not dangerous, but obviously you have backups. I hope we all should have backups. I should check my backup solution as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. You find find this mainline kernel on on kernel.org or the actual what the actual version is. Um, you see it here in uh, red circled um, in the left corner. Um, 
ignore the big yellow field on the right. Uh, just look at look at the at the top of the table. There you normally find the kernel um, you want to 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 use for testing. It's just a few days old norm normally. Sometimes uh, and actually right now it looks like this. Um, that, those are the cases where uh, and the next version is already prepared and there's a bug fix release for the latest mainline release. Then it's okay to, to test the latest stable uh, uh, release. But normally you want to avoid that when an RC kernel exists, um, like in this case. Um, the thing is, um, um, be, be because developers, if you use a, a stable kernel in this, this case, state developers will always wonder, hey, uh, maybe we fixed this bug uh, already in the, with the last, latest big changes. And um, that already increases the chances your bug report is getting ignored. While it's not ideal to use such a kernel, um, it's not totally bad either. It's okay to, as a fallback if mainline doesn't work um, uh, for some reason. And it's definitely better to use that kernel than, uh, than not reporting the, your bug at all. Yeah, focus on, on this kernel in, in, in your report again because mentioning older ones is uh, not that much related. You can do it uh, on the side if there's a good reason, but normally just ignore it. One more thing at this, uh, at this occurrence, um, don't use a long-term kernel. Um, those are those uh, in the table that come a bit, little bit lower, even if they were uh, released today. That's because uh, some big bug fixes are never um, backported to these um, stable and long-term kernels because that sometimes is simply too risky. And uh, that's why there are many known bugs there that, that will never get fixed. Um, that makes long-term kernels, or actually LTS kernels, are, as they called in the wild, pretty un unsuitable for reporting. Still better than not reporting at all, as uh, again, but uh, if you report with such a kernel, it's... Uh, High risk that the developers will ignore it or ask you to to, to check with a more modern kernel. It depends a little bit on on the developer. No rule without exception. Actually, if there's a regression um, uh, in a stable or long-term kernel, then it's okay to to use them for testing. A regression is when something breaks when switching from from one version to another, like from five five point fifteen point point ten to five point fifteen dot eleven then it's okay. Uh, but even then you might want to test mainline um, because um, if there, uh, the problem doesn't happen there, then the fix might already be available and, and is actually on, already getting backboard. It's a little bit too complicated. That's actually in the docs I'll mention uh, later, uh, explained in more detail. Which concludes this point and brings us to the next ex ex uh, um, important aspect. That is, uh, yet again, you have your own um, Linux land and... Um, and um, uh, ex uh, in, your, in there, accident happens regular. Um, for, for example, the water the, or the roller coaster stops somewhere along the track often. And your friend um, who helped design these can't explain, can't explain things and um, flies over. And immediately when he comes to your park, he spots a mobile attraction that is sitting in a corner of your park and, and uh, one that you actually allowed to come by every day and use your park's infrastructure. But when the friend look, looks closer, um, he notices that the, uh, the people from this mobile attraction actually modified some water pipes in the park for their needs. And actually, the, uh, the friend suspects that the power grid is unable to handle the extra load the, mo uh, the mobile attraction that comes every day creates. But he's not even allowed to, to look closer at, at this attraction um, because it, uh, their owners consider it a trade secret. Yeah. yeah, and the friend, yet again, can't do anything because, yeah, he... Is, it's not his fault, and he yet again flew over. And you don't want to annoy friends like that, don't you? Yeah, and that's the same with the kernel. So you should ensure the kernel is and and the kernel and your system um, is uh, uh, running healthy and still and the kernel is still vanilla. And some of these problems uh, and the, uh, the kernel is actually. Possible, uh, um, possible to to detect uh, 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 on its own, and um, to do that, you just need to look up a file in the proc file system. Don't worry about when I'm switching the slides this quickly; they, they will get online later. Um, there, there you uh, um, in that those file there sh should be a zero. Then the kernel is not tainted, and uh, then it's fine to move on, and you can ignore the next. Five or six, ten, uh, uh, five or ten slides, 
and uh, but it shouldn't look like this. Everything else than a zero is not good. And then the kernel is most unlikely uh, unsuitable for reporting. And one of those things um, that causes a zero here, uh, a one here, um, is actually NVIDIA's proprietary graphics driver. Because, yeah, that's basically the, the problem I, I described with the park um, a few minutes ago. It uses the kernel in unexpected ways and even changes it. And yeah, that's why Linux kernel developers don't care about uh, reports with kernels using these drivers because um, um, uh, they don't know how, how the kernel is, is what was modified by them. And the thing is, if you're now thinking, hey, NVIDIA open source, they're, they're at least a kernel mod module, um, that doesn't help much or, um, because uh, all out of, tree, out of tree drivers are such a problem. Um, because the kernel is then not vanilla anymore. That's the uh, first example we, I gave. And um, yet again, uh, it's, it's not upstream, and the up the most upstream developers won't care. Yeah, It's just a different taint number in the, in the proc file, file system you see um, uh, uh, that is used when, when it's not a proprietary driver. Yeah, and that's why you should uh, deinstall such drivers, reboot, and check if the issue is still present. Um, and also check if the tainted flag is then cleared, and if it's zero, then um, if it is, you're free to proceed with reporting. Um, but note that there are quite a few other things that can, can cause the kernel to get tainted. Um, there are way too many to, to mention them here, but one, of, uh, one that happens quite quick, frequently is an oops, for example. Uh, that's a critical error that was detected, uh, intercepted, and contained. And the kernel can continue afterwards, but it's in a kind of undefined undefi uh, state, which can uh, lead to subsequent faults, and stuff so so is considered unreliable. And the taint flag is uh, said to indicate that, indicate that. That's actually uh, uh, what such uh, um, how such an oops, oops looks like. And uh, the kernel also, if that happens during early boot or something, shows if the um, um, if the kernel is tainted. These flags here, here you see, don't see a number, here you see letters. And uh, um, in such cases, most of the time, it's, uh, the kernel is simply uh, unsuitable for reporting. And uh, the thing is, um, there's one big exception here, the first oops or warning. And that's ob obviously something the kernel developers are most of the time interested in. The kernel document uh, the docs explain this in more detail. Um, there's a document uh, reporting issues in the, um, in the Linux kernel that was actually written by me. Uh, at least most of it was written by me. And that explains this in more detail. If, if your kernel is tainted, look into there. It contains a uh, section what to do. And that section actually links to a different page which has all the flags and the numbers explained and has a script how to decode these numbers to get, uh, uh, get the reason why your kernel is tainted. Um, Thing is, there's a bit more to test uh, to talk about integrity here, uh, as there are some issues the kernel can't detect. Um, you want to uh, you first uh, want to think about a few other uh, things as well. For example, is your hardware working as specified and uh, stable? Uh, or running man tests might be a good idea um, if you have uh, uh, problems that are not really uh, uh, reproducible. And it might be your memory, memory that's faulty. And yeah, overclocking actually is a stupid idea when, when uh, re reporting uh, kernel bugs because over, uh, over, uh, the kernel actually is pretty sensitive and, and uh, actually might be the only software in your system that doesn't work stable any, on anymore if you're overclocked. So um, then you overclock may, maybe simply too much. Yeah. Well, Another thing you should think about is if you have an issue with file system, FS checks the, the volume. And what you also want to do is always check the kernel uh, um, log buffer with dmessage minus, minus uh, h. Um, look out for anything red and bold there. Um, and it looks like this, and the red and the bold uh, sections are that, uh, actually when there's something wrong. And it um, uh, might tell you. Um, uh, something it might tell you in an error message you, you're able to Google if, uh, to come closer to the problem and save everyone a lot of time to, um, to, uh, in this whole process, and yourself especially. That's it on this part, which brings us to the next example. Um, 
Say this time you have a, a valid problem with your park, with your up-to-date vanilla park, and uh, you only mentioned it on the school you, you reunion with your friend, where the friend later got pretty drunk and headed off with a love interest from his school days to, to the bedroom or something. Or say um, you re only report a problem to some web forum, message board, or chat um, uh, on, on a website um, you know your friend visited uh, when he was young. Yeah, and... But turns out in the end, after months or years, your friend didn't actually look into uh, into the problem, didn't fix it, and yeah, that's not your your, your friend's problem, um, because he might have have not visited that uh, page uh, that website anymore, and uh, maybe it's somebody else that's responsible for these things these days. Anyway, you don't know. Maybe he, your friend uh, handed it over to somebody else. That's why you should always submit your bug report in the right place. And web forums there uh, definitely won't work. And uh, distro bug trackers are also most of the time a, a bad idea because, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the distributions uh, don't have enough um, manpower uh, uh, resources to, to handle all of uh, all of these bug reports. And the thing is, sadly, most of the time, bugzilla kernel.org, which looks like this, is also the wrong place. It might look like the central bug tracker, but in fact, it's not really. Uh, which you follow, uh, which you learn if you follow this link that's actually on the front page, uh, which brings us back to this reported issues doc document I mentioned earlier, and that actually states that most of the time Bugzilla.org is um, 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 is a bad idea. And explaining that is a bit complicated. The long story shor short is it was set up by people that thought uh, having a um, bug tracker like that was a good idea. And some developers actually liked it and started using it. Some still do. Uh, but many or maybe even most of the de developers never liked the idea. And um, it didn't really, f uh, because it doesn't really fit into the, into the email based uh, workflow they have. And there was the idea to have volunteers to go as, as, uh, to, uh, to, as go between people for such subsystems maintainers uh, that forwarded all valid bug reports to them. But that never really worked out. And uh, yeah, that was like maybe 15 years ago or something. And that's why um, that was never cleared up probably. And that's why uh, even today, many of the reports you file there never get forwarded to the responsible de developer. So maybe a report you're filing there is, is never looked at, at by anyone. And uh, yeah, that's why uh, reporting a bug to, uh, to, uh, bug to bugzilla kernel.org it's often is a bad idea. Instead, do what the reporting issues document tells you. Look up where to report the bug to in the maintainer's file. That's the file that, uh, where the de developers actually use to, to find and contact each, uh, each other. And that will look like this. And you'll see lots of email addresses there. And that's because most of the time you need to report um, your, your bug by email. And that will look like this. Here we take, for example, the ButterFS file system. Um, uh, if it looks like this, um, or like the, the driver on the top, you just um, uh, mail the maintainer, and typically there's also a mailing list, uh, which you always should CC. And yeah, as I said, most of them, um, um, uh, you prefer uh, things by email because that's how they do kernel development most of the time. Yeah. Um, but there are a few exceptions that are actually mentioned in the maintainer's file. Um, the ACPI subsystem, for example, they use Bugzilla uh, uh, kernel.org. Um, a few other ACPI, uh, PC, uh, um, PCI and PM subsystems also use it. But from the uh, 2 to 2500 um, uh, entries in that file, only about 20 uh, refer to this bug tracker. Um, a few other subsystems, uh, subsystems actually use an external bug tracker. Among them, or the most popular ones, are the driver uh, developers for the AMD, Intel, and some other uh, core graphics drivers. Uh, they use a um, bug tracker on freedesktop.org. Then you ha should should uh, rep uh, file the issue there. Normally, sh they should also um, um, pick up reports by email, but they will often ask you to file your issue there. Yeah, sadly, this uh, maintainer's file is quite long. It makes it hard, hard to read. And, and just like the Bugzilla situation, that is, uh, you might wonder why it is so, so complicated. Yeah, that's not by design. That just happened over time. And there are uh, no volunteers inside to bring order into this. So if you have a spare cycle and want to do something to make the kernel better, 
uh, this is something where, where uh, uh, a few hands are needed. Um, I'm actually trying to do a few things there, but it takes time but because uh, I have to earn, earn some money for, for, for living as well. Um, brings us to the last point. And the decent uh, um, um, report category. Imagine your friend showing you a bug report from someone you both went to school with, uh, but someone you both didn't really like. And you read the subject and the first paragraph of the report and don't get the slightest idea what this, what this mail is all about, or the whole text is confusing and unnecessary and full of unnecessarily and distracting details, or has five attachments and ten links, or is written maybe in an unfriendly and demanding or beerish way. And yeah, reminder, if, if, you, if your friend shows you that and he can ignore us, wouldn't you suggest to him, hey, uh, just ignore that bug report. That guy is not worth spending your time. You have way, way more important things, yeah. That's in the end why you don't want to write a report like I, I just outlined, uh, outlined and write something that is easy to consume. And um, the thing is, describing uh, what's actually needed there is actually like, uh, like it was an, its own quite long talk, uh, and most of us are not really interested in that. Um, in the end, it's uh, the short version is it's a kind of bal balancing act. Think of it like asking for a favor, a favor from someone that doesn't help to help you, a favor, a favor from someone that um, might be stressed, stressed already, uh, or really short on time. And so, um, if you keep that in mind, then and it's sure to make the picture uh, easy to grasp for the recipients. And um, uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, describe the problem um, neither too long, nor uh, not neither too brief, nor as a novella, because both of that that doesn't work. That's that's really the short version of this. this. What you also should mention is what you, you what I told you about earlier that that you um, uh, what version you tested is if it was a vanilla kernel and if it's tainted that uh, avoids any doubt uh, doubt by the developer that it's not about upstream and you also should should mention the the, the environment the Linux distribution obviously and the hardware if it's depend uh, if it's relevant if it might be relevant in a particular case. You also should uplink or uh, upload and link uh, all uh, uh, relevant logs. So you can, uh, in some cases, you can also attach them. But the thing is, don't overlook, uh, overload the report uh, with that. If something is missing, the developers will ask for ask for it. Uh, something that is often relevant is the uh, kernel uh, uh, log output I mentioned earlier from dmessage. Uh, sometimes the hardware configuration with LSPCI and maybe the kernel configs, uh, but don't attach all of that. Better upload it somewhere and and link to it. Uh, then it's available if pe people need it, and if they don't, that's not a problem. In the end, it always depends on the ice on the issue. And uh, yeah, if you prepared your problem like that, uh, step away for a moment and. Um, Really put two or three sentences on top of it, summarizing the situation uh, in yeah in two or three sentences, um, because that's the only thing some of the developers and some of the people that read your, uh, your report will uh, will actually read, because most of them have a busy day, yeah. And um, some not even get that far. That's why it's even more important to to um, uh, write a really good subject. On it, um, if you have somebody at hand, show show it show, uh, that doesn't know much about it. Show show the subject in the first two or three sentences to to another person and ask if if they understand it, um, because it's really important to get 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 this right. But in all, in general, don't overthink or overdo your report. Um, a short report will often do. Getting the getting the basics right is is really the important thing and. Yeah, what you also should remember is um, check for existing report about a problem to join um, where you can join the discussion. Uh, you might w now wonder, hey, shouldn't he to have told me that uh, earlier already? Yeah, that's correct. But the thing is, this talk didn't uh, didn't describe the things in the in the direction you should you should do uh, perform them. Um, that's why you, if you ever get into this uh, situation, should open this uh, reporting issues docu uh, document from the kernel logs. There's a step-by-step -step guide there that looks a little bit scary, um, but it's uh, actually written in a way to make sure it catches problems early. So it uh, catches problems on your, on your side early, 
which uh, avoids you trouble, and that's why it's really in your interest um, to to look into this. So I need to get oil my 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 um, throat a bit. So the document also tells you. <coughs> To check what kind of issue you de deal with, because some, if you, um, some of them require a few additional steps. Um, but that's not the only reason why you want to do it. it. It also determines what you can expect from the developers, which is kind of important. Also, that actually brings us to Act Two, which is actually a lot uh, 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 smaller and quicker. So don't worry. Um, just uh, in, uh, the, the uh, number of slides per minute increases even more. Um, <coughs> What kind of those are the issues someone is obliged to address? I mentioned those earlier already. Um, there are actually three of them. One are security issues that are pretty uh, um, uh, likely won't happen to many of you. If that ever uh, is the case, follow the reporting uh, issues document that brings us to a dedicated page on this, uh, which actually explains things in, in more detail um, um, and look, look it up there. That's not that long. There are also the devastating bugs, uh, so not the pain is off somewhere. It's really something really bad, uh, like data is lost or da damaged or hardware is bricked. There's, I think there's someone in the room that managed this uh, once, uh, but I'm not pointing ping fingers anywhere. Um, and that's uh, luckily even more rare that uh, things like that uh, actually happen. Yeah, just make the... That's uh, in case that ever happens to you, just make the impact and the ur urgency obvious in your report. And in case it's not quickly uh, acted upon, upon get this uh, guy in the loop because he wants to know and he can make sure that pe people speed up. Which brings us to the third and more common type. That's actually our reg regressions. I briefly mentioned them already. That's when something breaks when updating the kernel. And that's actually not allowed in the Linux kernel due to it, the first rule of Linux kernel uh, development, which is actually is uh, we don't cause uh, regressions. That is actually was actually coined and is, uh, is still enforced by Linus himself. He wants to take the fear out of updating. Um, the problem is nevertheless um, uh, regressions happen quite frequently because the kernel changes changes so much, and the thing is, sadly, uh, quite a few of those reports even fall through the cracks. That's actually why I want, uh, volunteered to, as a kernel's regression tracker a while ago, and uh, actually build a bot to make sure that the reports that are, are coming in in various places uh, for regressions are at least tracked. Really ugly, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm not a good designer and not a, not a good programmer either, but it, it does the job these days. I'm still working on it. Actually, it, uh, the, uh, was, uh, there was some funding from the EU, uh, European Union to, that made, made me uh, 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 do this. And that actually ran out recently. These days, uh, Meta is stepping up to, to fund, fund me, uh, to make me continue that work. Many thanks for that. Yeah. I could talk about regression and tracking them for hours, but that's a different t t uh, topic and we don't have the time for, uh, for it. And uh, yet again, there is already a document already describing uh, the, the, the major things that actually new in uh, uh, 5.18 that was recently released. It mentioned uh, everything important. Uh, um, among the important things are make it obvious in your report that it's about a regression, for example, by including the word regression in the subject or even as a tag there. CC or forward the re uh, report to the regressions mailing list that actually make sure that I see it and can add it to the tracking. And no, there are so some fine print involved with when it comes to regressions. Only uh, user land interfaces matter. So if your kernel, external kernel mod mod modules break, that doesn't uh, isn't, isn't covered by the um, uh, no regression rules. Only user land uh, interfaces matter. And um, uh, another f uh, important detail here is that um, the build config of the newer kernel uh, version must be similar to the old one. It's also explained in the in the kernel documentation how to actually do that. Uh, but the thing is, in the new new kernel, might for example have new feature, new optional features that might interfere here. 
uh, say a um, um, new security technique is blocking something very old and very rare apps need some something you run that can that can actually happen that's actually hidden by a config switch then to make sure the kernel can uh, introduce the, the such things over time and the, the uh, apps get fixed over, over time the docs mentioned uh, the uh, the doc i mentioned uh, explains how to do that and it also mentions the third and last fine print uh, point um, uh, during the, uh, the reporting process uh, you might be asked to find the culprit yourself because Many bugs uh, um, only happen in a, in a certain environment, um, and that's uh, unavoidable. Uh, unavoidable, unavoidable. Um, and uh, you need to test. Uh, that's why developers might be unable to test them and to recreate them. That's why uh, you might be may be asked to to run a git by section that actually looks at the distance between uh, two versions and the changes between them and finds the one that actually introduced. Um, the, 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 the regression that sounds hard uh, it, it is a bit hard but it can often be done in an hour or two if the problem is easy to, to check the uh, thing is an initial report without uh, checking that this is, is okay uh, um, so because the problem might, might be known already and then t somebody t can tell you um, no you don't need to bisect this uh, we already are, uh, are fixing this but if, if you are asked to do, do a bisection, really do it, because uh, once you do, uh, did that, um, once, you, once the culprit is, is found, it, uh, it, uh, so, uh, a fix is pretty much guaranteed, um, because then the volunteers and subsystems that are re responsible are, are known, and if, um, it's, it might often be possible to just revert the, the change that, uh, that's causing um, uh, um, causing the regression and if you um, have a regression that's not fixed tell me then I will, will uh, look into this and, and check uh, 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 and, and maybe bring this uh, even to Linus so he can, can, can uh, look into it um, yeah that concludes um, the area on, on issues that have, to, um, uh, that have to be fixed um, in case you're wondering who actually uh, 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 um, has to fix these issues as in the case of regressions, I mentioned that's easy. That's the author of the, the change. And yeah, actually, um, if they don't do this, the maintainers have to step up. That's actually a picture of 2013. I think uh, like five or ten people from back then are today in the room. Or maybe more, four, uh, five. Yeah, and if they don't do it, actually, Linus himself uh, will actually look into re the regression and fix them. That happens rarely, uh, but it happens. Yeah. Which brings us to the issues uh, most likely to be ignored. Um, the thing is, the kernel contains, uh, contains known deficits. Um, a basic uh, incomplete driver, or for example. Uh, in, um, there are many of them in the kernel because yeah, a basic incomplete driver is way better than none at all. And uh, sometimes these drivers are simply not uh, improved at all because uh, the kernel lacks uh, a volunteer with enough time and motivation to improve, improve the driver. And there's a second reason for known deficits because, um, because some real world issue might prevent Im improvements. The big, uh, good example here is the Nouveau driver for GeForce cards. Uh, there are no really, uh, or, or the do documentation on it is scarcely, and the firmware actually prevents you from using the full capabilities of the hardware. And there's nothing the kernel developers can do that uh, they have to, to, to de deal with that. And uh, yeah. But what does it mean for your reports? Yeah, if it looks like it's a missing feature that you're going to report, uh, you want to check the internet for uh, if this is already known, if this is a known deficit, and um, then uh, you might, uh, you may be better off not not um, reporting it. And if in the doubt, uh, simply send a quick uh, e email. Uh, hey, is this problem known, or should I uh, look closer into it? Um, that gives everybody a quick chance to to respond and without wasting too much time. Um, there's another reason why some bug fix will never lead to a solution. Um, there is code in the kernel without an active maintainer. Uh, Linux contains quite a bit of that code, and it's not too much, but uh, somewhat. Uh, the code often remains in the kernel, as just with, it, uh, with an incomplete driver, it's useful for people. Removing it uh, would cause a regression too, and uh, thanks to the no, re no regressions rule, um, there should actually be nothing uh, that breaks this, this kernel. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, at least if enough people test and re uh, test the kernel, test new kernels, and re re report problems if there are. Um, um, yeah. About this, these um, unmaintained code, there are two kinds of it. Uh, there's um, code that uh, has no real maintainer, but someone that keeps an eye on it. That's actually mentioned in the in the um, maintainers file again. Uh, their status then is called odd fixes. Um, then that uh, you should send at least a quick brief report if you have have a problem in with such a driver, as a, uh, the person that uh, has an eye on, th on on the things might might be interested in it or might know a solution, and um, uh, and fix the things. Or maybe you find others on the mailing list and can team up together. Then there's also fully often code in the kernel, and um, there's only a mailing list mentioned there. And even then, you should send a quick quick brief report because yeah maybe you find others that are affected and you can team up and find a solution together. That actually concludes this uh, section, <coughs> brings us to the last uh, area that are the, is a big and wibbly wobbly area in between those two extremes, but also all the other issues. What matters here is quickly is explained as uh, that's what Act 1 actually report uh, uh, discussed is uh, the quality of the report, that's what matters here. That actually brings us to the finale, and um, so take the following things with you. If you have a problem, take a look at the reporting issues um, document in the Linux kernel. Yes, it looks a bit scary, but it's not. It helps you to avoid uh, wasting time in a report that gets ignored otherwise uh, uh, ignored in the end, and uh, as it tries to catch problems locally early, it's in your it's thus in your interest to, to follow it and. Um, it actually has a um, detailed reference section where all of these points are explained in more detail if you need, a, need it. Um, to understand why things as they are, always keep in mind, uh, almost all kernel developers are volunteers. Um, they should act on, on every bug report, uh, but they can and will ignore bad reports. Um, so act accordingly and send a decent report, um, then you will be heard. To do that, um, you should check what uh, kind of issue you deal with, as, as that might uh, save you from wasting time on reporting known deficits, and um, tells what to expect. Uh, tells you what to expect from from develop developers. Uh, for example, if there is no uh, nobody uh, taking care of the code, also do your homework um, uh, before uh, submitting the report. Test the report with a vanilla kernel. Um, test. Is that, oh, ah, last minute it changes to the slide. Uh, test and report with a fresh mainline code base. Rule out local interferences. Check the maintainer's file where to submit um, the report to. And uh, write a free, friendly and decent report that's easy to grasp for others. Um, uh, then, then everything will be fine. That's the reporting issues document mentioned all of this. And if you do that, chances are pretty good someone will help you, or nearly perfect if you report a bisected regression. Yeah, and that in the end in is how you how you get the Linux kernel developers to fix uh, bugs they are able to fix, which makes everybody happy, especially that guy. Uh, but all of us and all of the users, yeah. And that's actually was my talk. If everybody wonders, I think that was slide 162, and brings us uh, to the questions, if there are any, or if you're all asleep from now. Uh, so for regs bot, and I'm sorry if I just mispronounce it, for, for the, the regression tracking bot you wrote, so that doesn't run tests, if I understand correctly, it just it looks at CI systems elsewhere that run tests and... No, I don't, I don't do any CI testing. There are people, um, and uh, there are various efforts already with CI testing. And um, they are also working on a solution to to make um, uh, to track regressions they find during the testing. The thing is, these uh, these automatic testing testing fi sometimes finds bugs uh, that don't happen in real life, and um, um, uh, that's one of the reasons why developers sometimes ignore the, these reports because there are suddenly way too many of them, and. Um, um, uh, um, that's 
uh, the uh, kind of problem. That's why I'm focusing more on the user side of things, where somebody really reported a problem that occurred. It might might sometimes I track um, of, uh, issues that are all fined by by CI systems as well. But normally I focus on really uh, problems that happened to make sure those get fixed and not some ter theoretical problems that don't happen in the wild. Yeah, even if you did include the, the other CI systems, it seems useful to have like a one-stop shop where you can look at where all the regressions are. Um, like I'm so sure many. sooner or later that will come to this because the, the people that are working on it, I think there's a talk later after, after, after lunch uh, that's covering a bit on that. And um, sooner or later, I think those, those solutions will come, will come closer together. Thanks. Um, so I think the, the two things, right, that make fixing a bug easy is either a great little test case or, as you said, someone bisecting uh, the kernel. My question is, how can we make someone building any kernel, maybe even from Git, make that easy for people to do? Because that is, that is hard. I think asking people to, you know, they're on Ubuntu something and asking them to reproduce on mainline is a big ask. I would love for that to be way easier because that would then, if you can do that, you can bisect things, right? Too. Yeah. So what do I, we do? Actually, actually if I uh, if if there were um, like forty eight hours in a day, uh, or if you give me two years of uh, time, uh, I'd actually sit down to to get closer to this problem. I have two ideas how to do that. Um, there's one thing I always wanted to uh, work on was um, a kind of. Uh, uh, PC uh, distro config uh, to get it included in the upstream kernel, uh, uh, which kind of so maybe take the Debian config from Debian 10, make it uh, adjust it a little bit to make sure it works on on modern Ubuntu and uh, Fedora as well. It boots there, and then maybe people uh, one could tell people, hey, just um, use this config does, uh, with the old kernel and the new one and check if the, um, um, if, if the issue happens and then they, people could bisect and don't have to fiddle with the, um, with, the, um, with the configuration. And something that is updated every two years or something like a, a, a distro config 2020, 2020, 2022, 2020, 24 to get, bring it more in line with, with what uh, distros are actually using. And the other thing is I mean, if you have a really quick machine, you could build a lot, all, all these kernels in between, if you have such a configuration that works on the main, main distros, um, you could build all the kernels in between and actually package them maybe in some ideal way to make it easy for people to install all of them so they don't need to compile at all. I think that's uh, that would be a, a good solution in the end. Maybe it's not even possible, I don't know, but, but that's... I, uh, uh, the direction I'd like to work on. Okay. Um, on top of this, I would like to add that uh, booting a newly uh, built kernel is not always easy on some distros. Uh, I used to know uh, the grub config, which was uh, 10 lines and which was uh, trivial. And uh, nowadays, it's easy to find uh, uh, 1,000 lines uh, config and figures that you have to launch some commands to uh, to prepare it when you are not used to that distro. And I think it's a problem for newcomers as well. Yeah, it's, it's for newcomers. It's really a problem. We should really uh, make it easier. And yeah. um, I guess uh, somebody just would sit down and look closer. And mm. yeah, maybe some some other solution comes out of it. Yeah. Probably. And the other point, uh, uh, the first reason why I asked for the mi microphone, um, I wanted to um, to say that uh, regarding your uh, your suggestions uh, for a bug report, in fact, you don't need to make that report interesting. You need to think that uh, developers constantly have uh, bugs to deal with, and you need to make your bug report more appealing to work on than any other one, because. In fact, uh, a developer may sometimes spot in your bug report that, okay, there are enough information in it, I'm sure I can fix it in five minutes. And uh, that's really something to, uh, to focus on because some of us are used to seeing bug reports which are horrible. Uh, and sometimes the reporter tries to do something great, but you get a full report in a PDF from a, a company or whatever 
or you have to uh, unzip uh, a file to extract some reports is horrible and nobody wants to work with this. Yeah, some, sometimes I think we need some, some kind of script or some small app where there's people, people can use to, to re submit uh, bugs. So, so uh, the, the main things are ask is this a vanilla kernel and things like that. And to, to not make things so complicated, a lot could be improved there. Yeah. So I have to wonder, wouldn't it make sense to pre-build a kernel binary and just tell people, well, download this, up to install this kernel version, test, up to install this other kernel version, test, and provide a report? I mean, the kernel binary plus modules and all this, it's like, what, 50 megabytes per package? It's 50 megabytes, but, but obviously if you want to bisect, you need to build like 15,000. Uh, that gets a little more. It, it should be doable, but I think, yeah, that's uh, what we should go to in the end. So, so not, not with uh, each and every uh, package version. Right. Um, maybe in a universal way, or maybe the big, we get the big distros on board and uh, um, maybe get uh, Debian, Fedora, and, and uh, Ubuntu and OpenSUSE to, to provide a, a constant service so they can do, so their users can test vanilla and the config they those distributions are using without uh, compiling kernels all, all the time which is pretty annoying that might be really approachable yeah just download binary install and test exactly yeah there's an end, end sign there but I, but I'm not getting thrown away from it. last one okay yeah, just a quick, quick comment, and you basically touched on this uh, just for Ubuntu, and I'm quite sure that Debian is the same. That all the mainline kernel are built as Debian packages. Yeah, but so I don't mean all, all the versions. I mean each commit. No, no, I'm not talking about bisection. Yeah. I'm yeah. I was uh, more referring to the previous comment yeah. that yeah. is difficult to build from yeah. source, uh, at least for Ubuntu, and I think Debian, they are available, so you just download it, but install the dev and reboot. Yeah, they yeah, are that, configured that's, with the same that, way yeah. that the, the, the official Ubuntu ones are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, possible. that's what I mentioned in the middle of the talk. There are pre-built binaries packaged for all the big distros where you can in install an RC kernel normally. Yeah. Okay, uh, I went way over time. Sorry for that. <laughs> but thanks, everybody, for listening. Okay, enjoy the conference. Thank <laughs> you.